issue is this question of personal accountability and how an institution um, handles this sort of assault on its integrity or so forth. How do you yeah. move forward through that? Well, can I, can I attempt to answer that at the same time answering the Girardian question? Because Indeed. I take it that that's... Yes. Because um, uh, this, is, uh, this, was, uh, this was very much in my head as I tried to write a couple of articles in the tablet, which incidentally are on my website if people haven't seen them. When, when you have a world of conspiracy and accusation, you obviously have a world in which Girard is very relevant. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I noticed very early on when this fuss suddenly came up again in the light of McCarrick and the Pennsylvania thing and then, and then began on, was you had two, the two typical, um, let's say, approaches when there's, a, when there's issues of accusation. One is people who have a conspiratorial accusatory view that somehow everybody is involved, mm -hmm. that somehow <clears throat> it's networks of people who are doing things uh, as though people were conscientiously involved in various forms of, of uh, a cover up. Uh, and then on the other side, you have the the reverse of that, in a sense, which is people say, no, the institution is basically good, it's basically fine, there are a few bad apples. In other words, one taints everybody with the same uh, brush and therefore makes it actually impossible to discern what really goes on in each individual case, which is likely to be a mixture of incompetence, sometimes malice, sometimes fear, sometimes innocence. Uh, uh, generally a mixture of all of those things, as you would get in more or less most circumstances, um, like in family relationships or in the local post office or whatever institution you are uh, talking about. So, for instance, at the very early stage, there was a said, well, this is all the fault of gay priests, so gay priests must be uh, rooted out. Uh, and of course, as I think, I hope I've made clear in my I think there, there, is, there is a gay element to this story, but it's not, as it were, one that's simply to do with homosexuality. It's one to do with enforced dishonesty in relation to homosexuality. So the question is, how do you uh, start to try and work out what has really been going on in a way that's neither a conspiratorial tar brush against everybody, nor a self-flattering, well, it's basically fine, but there are a few bad apples. Because as it were, one is far too strong an attack <laughs> and one is far too weak an attack. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, is, you know, it's far too strong a defense, uh, basically. It's a, it's, so the question of what it looks like to be able to undergo a systemic critique What's it like to be able to be uh, occupy the place of somebody who is part of a system that has been getting something wrong through the usual mixture of uh, ignorance, innocence, innocence both the senses of someone who is harmless, but also the sense of someone who was too ingenuous about <laughs> what they were doing, uh, malice, <laughs> I think. Uh, all that mix, those mixture of things that in fact are how groups come together and how they reproduce themselves. What's it going to look like to become self-critical in the midst of a system where the system isn't entirely bad because the institution isn't entirely bad, but the way the system has been running has clearly had largely unintended terrible effects. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, people's immediate reaction being uh, to protect the institution at the cost of people who are affected by it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, the, that's the really difficult thing. What does it look like, as it were, to occupy a non-accusatory, um, an, an appropriately ashamed space mm -hmm. for long enough 
to be able to actually to see what genuinely is wrong and how systemic it is and therefore how it can be undone.